Louise Peach was born Lofi Louise Pressler in Bienville, Louisiana on September 20, 1880. The daughter of a wealthy newspaper publisher, she was educated at the best private schools in New Orleans. However, she soon developed a reputation for sexual promiscuity, leading to her eventual expulsion. Back home in Wienville, Louise took up a life of leisure. In 1903, she married travelling salesman Henry Bosley and joined him on his travels. All went well until 1906, when Bosley arrived home to find his wife in bed with another man. Devastated by her infidelity, he killed himself two days later. Louise next appeared in Boston, Massachusetts, where she worked as a high-class prostitute and supplemented her handsome earnings by stealing from her clients. Eventually caught at this game, she fled to Waco, Texas, where she wooed oil man Joe Appel, known for his extravagant diamond rings and diamond-studded belt buckles. One week after meeting Louise, Appel was dead from a bullet wound to the head and most of his jewellery was missing. Louise was hauled before a grand jury. She pleaded self-defence, insisting that Appel had tried to rape her. So convincing was her performance that members of the jury actually applauded when she was set free. No questions were asked about the missing jewels. By 1913, Louise was out of cash and down on her luck. She remedied the situation by marrying a hotel clerk, Harry Furort, in Dallas, Texas. For Louise, it was quite simply a marriage of convenience, and the nuptials had barely been completed before she was openly carrying on affairs with other men. Driven to despair by his wife's infidelity, Furort hung himself in the hotel basement. Louise next moved to Denver, Colorado, where she married door-to-door -door salesman Richard Pete in 1915. A year later, she bore him a daughter, but family life on a salesman's wage was not what Louise wanted. She abandoned her husband and child and took off for Los Angeles in 1920. There she became involved with Jacob Denton, a mining executive. Louise wanted Denton to marry her, but he refused. It was a fatal mistake. Denton disappeared on May 30, 1920, and Louise took over his home, throwing a series of lavish parties. However, Denton's lawyer became suspicious of Louise's glib answers regarding his client's disappearance. He alerted the police and a search of the property turned up Denton's body, buried in the cellar. He'd been shot in the head. As detectives launched a hunt for the missing Mrs. Denton, Louise had already fled back to Denver, where she took up a game with Richard Pete. She was eventually traced there and arrested. Convicted of murder in January 1921, Louise was sentenced to life in prison. Richard Pete corresponded faithfully with her for years, but in 1924, after she refused to answer his letters, he became the third spouse of Louise Pete to take his own life. It is said that Louise boasted in prison about the husband she had driven to kill themselves on her account. Louise was eventually paroled in 1939 and found work at a serviceman's canteen. Soon after, an elderly co-worker disappeared, her home found ransacked. Louise had been friendly with the woman and was questioned about her disappearance, but the matter went no further. In May 1944, she married an elderly bank manager named Lee Judson. Shortly after, Margaret Lowen, Louise's guardian since her release, vanished. Louise told Margaret's elderly husband that his wife was in the hospital and not allowed to receive visitors. She then persuaded the authorities to confine the old man to a mental hospital where he died six months later. Louise then moved into the Logan house with her husband. Louise continued to submit reports to her parole officer, ostensibly from Margaret Logan, but by December 1944, the parole officer had become suspicious of the glowing updates and dubious signatures. 
He alerted the police and a search of the Logan home turned up Margaret Logan's body buried in the garden with a bullet hole in the head. Louise was placed under arrest, her husband booked as an accessory. He would eventually be acquitted on January 12, 1945. The following day, he threw himself from the 13th floor of a Los Angeles office building. Louise, meanwhile, had been convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to die. She was executed in San Quentin's gas chamber on April 11, 1947.